Breaking news, you can be even more kissable than you are right now with Lolo Lips by Barmaids. The makers of the exquisite Lolo Bar has one of the best lip balms available. Some lip balms can cause your skin to dry out if you stop using them or if you lose them. And let's face it, we all lose them. This product doesn't force you to reapply in order to maintain the healthy balanced levels of moisture ideal for beautiful lips. It comes in eight tasty flavors with no paraffins, no fillers, no dyes, just natural lip moisturizer that has everything your lips want and nothing they don't. I dare anyone to try it and not feel like an addict. Kiss me, Lolo, I'm in love. Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. My name is Tina, and today is Friday, May 11th, and it's about 6 o'clock. It's after work, and this is not my normal recording time, so I'm going to ask you to forgive me if I seem a little discombobulated. <laughs> because whenever I record at a time other than a Saturday morning, if it's a Sunday morning, it's not so much of a big deal, but when I try and record at nighttime, for whatever reason, it feels weird to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Probably because I am a morning person, and at night, my mental capacity, I guess, goes down. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway... I'm going to jump right in because I have a lot to talk about today, and I'm going to try and keep this under an hour. It's Yeah, it's now 5.53. So I'm going to try and keep it under an hour. First thing is, um, I'm trying a different setting on my camera, and I realized that I have never been recording in HD. This whole time that I've been recording my podcast on this camera since I received it for Christmas. I've been recording on the setting just below it because every time I went to that other setting, which is the HD setting, it would give me a message saying, this is a high quality something, you know, resolution or something, and it can't be backed up on DVD. And so I didn't choose that because I didn't want to try something and have it not work. Well, last weekend I did a test last Saturday night after I had posted the um, podcast. I did a test on that setting. I just recorded a half hour of me sitting there spinning. And it worked fine. So we're going to try it. Hopefully it works fine again. Anyway, let's see. Week in review. Didn't do a whole lot this week. I did spin. And Lois... I didn't play Sims all week. <laughs> so, oh no, here goes Cody again. Cody, come here, baby. Um, I've been talking to Lois on Ravelry this week, and she told me not to uh, play Sims and to get knitting, and that's pretty much what I've been doing this week, is knitting and spinning and making some progress. Um, I did get back to my workouts this week, which has been good. I did Jillian Michaels workouts twice this week, and I also did four miles on the treadmill on Tuesday. Most of that was walking. But yesterday when I did my Jillian's Michaels, Jillian Michaels workout, instead of doing some of the cardio segments, there's like one minute cardio segments at the end of each set. I hate mountain climbers. So I skipped the mountain climbers, and I did, I did running sprints on the treadmill. So I'm hoping that those running sprints are going to help me get back into my running gear. So I might even try and go running after I finish recording tonight while I'm uploading and all of that. We'll see. I'll probably be needing more knitting time. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and this weekend is going to be busy, which is why I'm recording today instead of tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to a spinning guild meeting. Um, I think it's in Chelsea, Michigan. I can't see Cody where he is because my studio light is right over there and he's behind the little umbrella thing. 
anyway. So yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to a spinning guild meeting with a few friends of mine. And so hopefully that'll be fun. I'm taking my ladybug with me and uh, we're going to spin. You know, I don't know. There, I think there's people that sell fiber and stuff like that. And it's a four hour little meeting and then we'll probably get some lunch and what have you and maybe even go to the, um, the spinning shop afterwards. Excuse me for just a moment. Sorry about that. Cody was up there messing with the TV again. <laughs> I swear, I got home. Steve had given them a snack when I, as I was walking in the door. But he didn't do it like I do it. They get wet food, and I typically put a little bit of extra water in the food. Sammy won't eat the food unless it has the water in it. And sometimes even still, she's picky. So unless I do special little treats on the top, she just snubs her nose at it and doesn't want it. So after Steve gave them the snack, I had to go back and doctor it up for them. Because nobody was eating it and everybody was bugging me. But they know how to get to me. Anyway, before I forget, if you don't know, this is my Citron that I made a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Can't, I can't even remember when I finished it. I finished it this year, not too long ago. But if you're a new viewer, you probably haven't seen it before. Anyway, did I welcome everybody to the show? I told you, it's going to be a crazy show. I have so much to talk about, and I'm already screwing it up. <laughs> All right. I am going to first talk about, before I get into my um, knitting progress, I'm going to first talk about the featured designer who was Retro Lemon this week. I don't even know what to call it. I still don't know what to call it. Um, Retro Lemon, who is Jenna, who also has her own podcast called Retro Lemon. And she was the featured designer for the past couple of weeks. Here are some of her patterns. And they're all toys. They're all very, very cute. And I drew the numbers. For the winners of the pattern. Two people are winning a pattern. Jenna will be sending one. The first one. And I will be sending the second one. The first one is number 38. And that person is Grandma K. And her name is Kathy. So congratulations Kathy. You will be receiving your choice of one of Jenna's patterns. And the second winner is... Number 54, Non-Toxic MoMA, and that's Jody. So congratulations, Jody. Get in contact with me, both of you, and I will make sure that you get the pattern of your choice. Uh, both of you just go ahead and contact me. And Kathy, when you contact me, I will forward the information on to Jenna and um, have her send you your pattern. Come over here, please. So, congratulations again. You have won a pattern. Now, I am going to talk about the next featured segment, which this month, or this month, this time for the next two, three weeks, will be a dyer. And that dyer is Delusional Knitter, who again has a podcast. Um, she is the Revelations of a Delusional Knitter, and I will link that in the show notes. And I ordered some yarn from her a while ago. I think I, I think I found her podcast, and then I realized that she had an Etsy shop or something. I'm not 100% sure how I found it. 
Um, but I ordered some yarn from her because I just, the, looking at it in the Etsy shop, it looks like it was dyed very interestingly, interestingly. And it's not really a color that excites me. I mean, you know me, I'm a pink, bright colored person. But I just, it was really the only one in her shop and I just had to have some. So I ordered it and it really does look nice. And this is what I had ordered. And again, it's, she is the um, delusional knitter. And you'll see it's, the colorway is called Bloody Kisses and it's kind of a brownish red. And I just loved the depth of the color. I'm not exactly sure how she does it, if it's kettle dyed or if she uses different colors or what. I just thought it was very interesting. So she is our featured dyer for the next three weeks. And I am probably showing you some pictures up in the corner or I've pushed myself to the corner and you're getting some pictures of some things that will be posted in her shop. I have asked her, um, I've been, I've been working with her for a while. Um, she needed, she wasn't dying over the winter and so she just started dying in the spring and she needed some time to get some stock built up. So I've asked her not to post it in her shop until I posted the podcast. So she's been dying things up for the last month or two and she's been holding she's been holding it back so that she could upload it after the podcast so that if you happen to go to her shop you won't find it empty. So she's actually going to update her shop tomorrow evening. Um, that would be Saturday evening. Um, originally I was going to post the podcast on Saturday and then she was going to update in the evening, but then because of the, the spinning guild meeting, I'm recording a day early, but she's still going to update tomorrow. And, um, again, I'm showing you some pictures here of some things that are going to be in her shop. Now it's not going to be everything that's in her shop there's going to be more things too because she only sent me a, a handful of pictures and I already have the prize which I'm going to open up a thread on uh, on the group that you can enter to win this skein of yarn right here and this is the revelations colorway and it is purple and gray and um, kind of like a mauve color. It's very cool. I love it. I think this is one of the pictures that she sent me as well. And believe me, I will be stalking her site tomorrow as well. I was watching her podcast from a couple days ago. And she showed some more things that she had dyed up. So, and she ha also has fiber as well. She did not send me any pictures of fiber, but she did show them on her podcast a couple of days ago. So I do know that um, she has fiber. So this skein will be up for grabs. And maybe even this skein. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this for a giveaway for this or if I'm going to hold this back and give this away for another drawing some other time. But this will definitely be a giveaway. And again, um, this is her Revelations colorway. And I will post a thread where you can enter to win this skein of yarn. And then again, you can go to her shop tomorrow evening on Saturday and buy some stuff. So, that is the feature designer. And I'm going to go ahead and announce the barmaids as well. That way I can finish what's on this page and then move on to the other page because my show notes are two pages. I used to be a one show notes page, but let me see if I can find one. I don't. Sometimes I didn't even know how I got everything on the page. Um, 
that that's when I changed over to two. But like, I mean, even th these are two different two different uh, weeks. But I don't know how I ever got it all all onto one page. Anyway, so the barmaids, have you or ordered yours yet? I know. I need to order some more. In fact, I am. I mentioned last week that I was nearly out of face pudding, and I probably have maybe a week's worth left, maybe two. They're pretty quick in their shipping, so I probably can wait a little longer, but I will probably be ordering some very soon. Oh, this week, though, I started using the Pearl Kisses um, Lolo Bar. Love the smell. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of like... It's kind of like a citrusy. It's I have the um, pink grapefruit. I think it's pink grapefruit. But the Pearl Kisses is also a cit kind of a citrusy kind of smell as well. I really love it. I really do. Uh, that's what I've been wearing this week. And boy, it does make my skin so soft. So anyway, the winner this week of the Barmaids is number 30, Jane from Maine, and her name is Jane. So congratulations, Jane. Contact me, and I will send you your coupon code for $15 off your barmaid's order. So congratulations. So that's the barmaid's. Okay, it's 6.08. <laughs> 20 minutes in, and, or not quite 20 minutes, but I've gotten through a good job of everything. I still have a ton of more stuff to go through. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you one of the other things that I got to, that I'm doing this weekend, the Spinner's Flock meeting, and then Sunday's Mother's Day. So then we have a Sunday's Mon Mother's Day brunch. So this weekend is going to be crazy busy for me. I don't know if I'm going to get any knitting time at all, except for at the Spinner's Flock, but I'll be spinning. Okay, so before I move on to my projects, I wanted to give you a heads up of what's coming up in June. Um, we have the, the knit along that we're doing for April and May for the two shawls and the, the two pairs of socks, two sock patterns. Um, but in June, so those, that, that, Knit Along will be done at the end of May, and you have until May 31st to post your finished object in the finished object thread, and I will be drawing the prizes that following Saturday. But June is another month, and I am calling this Charity June, and it's going to be any charity you want to knit for. And again, any finished objects that are going to the charity, post them in the thread. Um, I would ask you to not only post your picture, but also post a link to the charity website. Maybe give a little bit of information about the charity kind of thing in the thread. Um, and that will be our knit along for June. The only thing is, is you will only have till June 29th to post your finished objects because I will be Cody okay this is gonna be one of those days you only have until June 29th to post your finished objects for the charity June there's still plenty of time to start thinking about what you want to do um, but I want to get that out there that it's going to be June 29th that's going to be the deadline because June 30th is the Saturday and that's the day I will be drawing the prizes. So I will mention it again. There will be a thread in the group. Um, if you have questions, you can always ask me. So let's get into my knitting. I don't think I'm going to need this anymore. I probably will and then... I'll have to pull it out again. I have some finished objects. Okay, he's going to lay down on the mantle, which is fine. 
As long as he's not touching the TV, we're good. Uh, now he's getting up, and now he's going to touch the TV. No. Okay. I just need to breathe. <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Okay, finished objects. I have two sets of washcloths. I started these on Sunday last week. If you remember, you see how that color changes? <laughs> Just by me holding that up. I think the color of the camera has a lot to do with what color is being shown. <laughs> anyway... Last Sunday, we went to a Cinco de Mayo slash birthday party at um, my mother-in-law's church, and I had finished my basic socks. So, I had nothing to knit on. So, before I left the house on Sunday, I grabbed a ball of cotton and my needles that I just keep in my bag now for my dishcloth and I just grabbed a ball of cotton and ran out the door and by the end of the day on Sunday I had two dishcloths made I started the first one and finished it while we were at the um, little luncheon and I got about halfway done with the second one while we were there so finished object number one and then I started this set on Monday and finished it today. So I am excited. I am kind of going to just be um, compiling these washcloths for future gifts for people. My mother-in-law told me she, when I was knitting the uh, knitting this at on Sunday, she told me how much she loves the dishcloths that I gave her for Christmas. That she uses them all the time, and she absolutely loves them. So, my thought is is that I'm going to make her probably 15 to 20 dishcloths for Christmas this year. I think what I'm going to do is kind of keep them in a theme, and probably not these um, ombre colorways. Probably a solid. Um, they're all going to be the grandmother's favorite dishcloth, but I think I'm going to do like the bright green, the orange, they might even have a pink, a bright pink, and then just do a whole bunch of, of those like that. Um, and then what my thought is, is that this is my, my leftover ball. You remember I just finished a Frankenstein one. I'm just going to use the Frankenstein ones for myself um, because I think I have like 10 or 15 dishcloths already. So I'm just going to keep these and then as the need comes up, I'll have dishcloths to give to people as gifts. I will probably um, order some handmade soaps and um, have them to give with the dishcloths. So those are my finished objects. Two finished objects this week. Yay. So let's talk about the Pamua. Pamua shawl. And I forgot to take it off the needles. Hang on, I'm going to take it off because I can't show you this. And I thought about it before I sat down. Actually, I thought about it while I was at work. But I forgot to do it. So hang tight. I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, well, so much for that idea. <laughs> I was thinking that I would quickly slip them off onto this stitch switch. Let me take it out of here. The stitch switch that I purchased a while back. 
it says regular size US 2 to 15. It sounds like a perfect thing. Although, I don't think it's going to work with a size. This is, it's not going to work down to a size 2. This, I think, is a size 4 or 6. And either I am really not getting how to do this or it really doesn't work that great that easily so anyway I'm not gonna take it off of the needles I was thinking I would just slip the knee slip it off onto here and then be able to slip it right back onto my needles however I'm struggling with it so I'm skipping skipping it but I promise it's either going to be off the needles by next week or I will put it on a larger cable. <laughs> More than likely it'll be off the needles. I can't even get this darn thing back in the bag. I really think that this, these, um, this stitch switch would be very beneficial for sweaters and whatnot, which is really what it's for but it says a size 2 and I seriously do not think you're going to get stitches from a size 2 on this this is almost as as wide as this um, needle which I think is a 6 it might be a 4 I don't have a needle gauge right here anyway we're going to skip it and hope that no stitches fall off the needles when I show you. Um, so, here's what I've gotten done. I did quite a bit. And I think I'm going to go have to get the door. Hang on just another minute. Okay. I think this show needs to be called Day of Interruptus. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I swear, sometimes I wonder about my husband. Anyway, <laughs> back to the shawl. Here's what I got done. I got quite a bit done. Um, I think I had said, and he's probably going to come in the house now because that was the neighbor that came to the door, wanting his mail. So now they're probably going to come through the house to get the mail, and they're probably going to make a bunch of noise. Anyway, I last week I was on row um, or section 29, 31. I was on section 31. And I just finished section 36. And however, it doesn't seem like that many sections, but that was like 2, 20, 4, 6, 30, 34 rows. That was like 34 rows. And actually... Yeah, 30, about 34 rows. This section was the longest section, which was section 36, which is what I just finished. It was 20 rows. This green here was just marking my center stitch because I can't seem to follow the line up when it's way down there. But this, the orange... The orange is where I was last week. I love it. Last week I talked about how I thought I was going to add some extra sections. However, not even blocked this center, I'm trying to stretch it out a little bit, is about two and a half feet. About. And um, 
I think it's going to be plenty long enough because I have 14 more rows before I start the border edging and then another 10 rows of border edging. So it's going to be a hefty size Charlotte uh, when I'm done, even without additional rows. So I'm not going to add extra rows. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking right this moment. <laughs> I could change my mind. I very well could change my mind. We'll have to see. Maybe once I put it on a larger cable needle, I'll be able to see it a little bit better and be able to make a better decision on whether or not I'm going to do that. But um, right now, not planning on uh, adding any extra sections. I did screw up though, and I will admit it, on the wave section, on this, on the wave section that I did just before, um, last week. Let me show you the wave section that is correct. This is the wave section that's correct, and you will see that between the wave section, between the two different waves, there's a garter stitch, there's a garter stitch, um, row. Okay, here they come, told you. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's a garter stitch row that goes between the two waves. Well, when I was doing the wave section down below, Apparently, I just made it up as I went. <laughs> because although there is a garter stitch, um, actually, um, let, let me scoot a little closer so I can show you. The garter stitch section is between there. But what I mean here is the garter stitch that's between, that, that comes between here. Because once you see this section, I did stock a net between the waves here. Can you see that? That one, and then this one. Different, but the key was that I stayed consistent. <laughs> Once I realized that I wasn't doing it right, I just kept doing it wrong. So this whole wave section that I just finished um, is all done the same way. So even though it's different than the wave sections above, it's still the same in that section. So I was not going to rip it back and take it out. So I left it. And it looks perfectly fine. And to be completely honest with you, I like the stockinette between the waves better than the garter stitch. So it'll be interesting to see how it blocks out, but that's my mess up. Oh, and also the reason that I put this other stitch marker in, at one point I was off and I ended up adding my stitches somewhere where I wasn't supposed to add them. I haven't been able to figure that out again I tried to go back and see if I could see it. I haven't been able to figure out where that was, but that's why I added the green marker in because it carries it up closer. So as I get closer to that center stitch, I can see that. So anyway, that's the Pamua shawl. And again, I have 14 rows plus 10 border rows left to go. And possibly some additional sections, but more than likely not. And then I started my effervescent socks. And I am using the Volmiza in colorway is this Neptune, I think. Neptune. Neptune were different in twin. It's a very teal color. And I'm not following the pattern. 
Um, yeah. These socks are written for cuff down. I hate cuff down socks. With a passion. I actually was going to attempt them cuff down. And I actually did. I cast on. And I got one row into it. <laughs> and I said, nope, not going to do it. I said, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to do it toe up. And I'm going to do a short row heel. And I'm going to do it my own way. And if it doesn't work out, it's my own damn fault. <laughs> so far, it's working out. I like a very tight knit sock. And I was looking at the pattern, and the pattern calls for eight stitches per inch in stockinette. And I understand that this particular stitch pattern pulls in a little bit. But I did a calculation, and I figured out that the stitch count that they were using um, for the size foot, I just could not figure it out because, for instance... They have um, 66 stitches for the small, okay? And if 64, six, 60, I'm sorry, 66 stitches for the small at a um, stitch gauge of eight. Is that right? Yeah, so that would fit, that would be like 8.25 inches around. That's, and they're saying it's going to fit somebody with a size, a seven inch circumference foot. Either I am way off base or the pattern is way off base. I'm not really sure which, but I cast on 66 stitches. My foot is eight inches around. However, I always make my socks with negative ease, but I always make my socks for 7.5 or 7.75 um, because I like my socks tight. I like a, a, a tight weave on my socks. So I did the 66 stitches. So far, I'm not having any trouble. I can fit them on my foot and they feel great. Um, now I am only doing a couple of the cables right now. So possibly when I get up to the leg, I may have to um, go up a needle size. We'll see what happens. Um, and I may even end up adding some extra stitches on the back side. I'm not sure what I will do. I'll probably go up a needle size if I have to because I am on size zeros for this. So... Yes, I am doing toe up. I, I cast on 11 stitches. I increased my toe. As soon as I got to my 66 stitches, I started the pattern. I did figure out that um, based on the, the row gauge that I'm getting and the chart pattern, I should be right in line with um, where I would normally start my short row heel. On my socks so right now I'm going with that what was kind of interesting with the knit companion which I love is that I am working the pattern reverse however if I can find my pattern what I was able to do the pattern is written um, from the top down, but in Knit Companion, I was able to flip the chart to rotate the, the image so that I'm working up the chart. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but I am on row 51 of the foot chart, and I have, I think there's 58 rows on the foot, and I think that I will be right in line with starting the leg chart at that point after I do my short row heel. So I will have to see. And then this way also, because um, I'm doing it toe up, if I desire to make my leg a little bit longer, I can do that. 
which is what I like to do. Let's see, I am using um, my Knit Picks needles, my Knit Picks um, fixed circulars, and they are really my favorite. I just ordered some Chai Gu and some Haya Haya in size zero so I could try those out and see how I like them. I use the Knit Picks because they're cheap. I love the feel of them. Um, and I like them, so I can buy, you know, they're like, what, five bucks for a pair of needles, and I have like, I don't know, maybe four or five pairs of zeros. So I can get multiple pairs, and it's not that expensive. I am getting, um, the, I, I told you that the pattern calls for eight stitches per inch. I'm getting 8.75 stitches per inch with the zeros because the pattern calls for a 2.5 millimeter and I'm using a 2.0 millimeter. Again, I like my socks tight and the calculations that I was getting with the numbers I didn't like and I did, I, why make socks if I'm not going to like them? So I'm getting 8.75 stitches per inch with the size zeros and the Vulmiza twin. Um... Oh, and has anybody noticed that the symbols on the chart are different than the symbols in the legend? I've figured it out, but it is kind of a little weird how the chart is a little bit different. I just have been doing my own thing with that. And I can see how some people are saying that the Vulmiza, because it's um, a little splitty, it is a little frustrating at times, um, especially since I'm not using a cable needle. I am cabling without a cable needle. Um, sometimes it's hard to get all of the um, plies of the yarn, but it's not too, too difficult. I do like this yarn for these socks. I think, um, I think a squishier yarn probably would be a better choice. But I really do like um, the Volmiza so far for what I'm getting. And I think a lot of people are saying that they are going to wear the socks opposite from what um, the pattern calls for. And I totally agree with that. I don't know why they wouldn't be that way to begin with. But the designer had a reason for doing it that way. But I think I'm going to wear my socks reverse as well. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to mention about this. I think that's it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. You can see how far I'm got, I've gotten. I started these on Tuesday, I think. I think it was Tuesday. And I can see how, how they can be so addictive because I when I've been knitting them, I've been like, oh, I just got to get to the next section where I where I swap them or, or something, and, and it just goes so quick. Now, I might not be feeling that way when I get to cabling on every single section and all the way around, but we'll see. I will probably work to the foot on this one, or I mean, sorry, to the heel, do the heel, and work partially up the leg before I start the second sock, only because I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing with it because I am not following the pattern. And... Um, I don't want to make two mistakes. So, so far, so good. So, those are my Effervest socks, and they're coming right along. I'm loving the pattern. If you haven't started your Effervest socks, go find some Vulmiza and start some, because they're awesome. All right, let's talk about spinning. I told you last week, that I had not been working on my giggle jelly, but on Saturday and Sunday, I powered through the rest of the second bump. So, and I have started the third bump. And I have my wheel here, and I don't know how easy it will be to pick up and show you, like Karen does. <laughs> she picks it up and shows you in the camera. So there it is. That's how much I've gotten on the 
third bump. I have the the other bump, the other um, bobbins on my lazy Kate right there. But I started the second, the third bump, and I broke off the first ounce and I pre-drafted it. And this is what I have left of the first ounce, and this is pre-drafted. So it's a lot thinner. And I'm using my handy-dandy little ba 31 bag that I received from Amy and Joyce at Knittopia. I love it. I have another bag on my ladybug, which I purchased for this exact reason. And then... I got lucky and got a second bag. So it's the perfect thing for my fiber. I actually purchased um, their bucket bag, which is a much bigger bag. It's probably about this big around. And it's a little bit too big, but this is really a perfect size and I love it. So I have the bag on my wheel and I also have this bag that I'm storing the fiber in. Just a moment, please. Cody? One more minute. I'm telling you. <laughs> I've had more interruptions. I don't, I don't even know how much time I've talked now because I've had to stop so many times. Anyway, so I've pre-drafted this and um, this is a great little bucket. I'm probably going to try and pre-draft a little bit more before I go to the, spin the spinning guild meeting tomorrow because I will take my, my little bag um, and I don't want to run out. Seriously, I don't think I would run out with as thin as I'm doing it, but it depends on how much I spin when I'm there. So I will probably pre-draft a little bit more tonight before tomorrow morning because there will be no time in the morning for pre-drafting anything because I am being picked up mucho early. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I've been working on this. I have decided, uh, you all know that I am spinning this up to make my mother a shawl and possibly a pair of socks. I have to say that I'm a little nervous that I've been spinning it too thin. I did another sampling, actually a couple of samplings, um, before I finished the end of the second bump. And let me show you what I have. <laughs> okay, so this one here is my first sampling. And the ones to the right, I guess, from your angle, <laughs> um, are the ones that I took from the second bump of fiber. And as you can see, they are a lot thinner. A lot thinner than the first. So, I'm nervous that I'm spinning it a little too thin, and I'm nervous about trying to make socks with something this thin. It is still a little springy, but I don't know. So, I'm going to start with the shawl. And then, just whatever I use, I use, and then um, if I have enough leftover socks after that, I will definitely make some socks. I even considered buying a fourth bump of fiber and four plying it, but then I'm afraid it might be a little bit too thick. Actually, I think one of these is four ply. <laughs> now that I think about it, because I did try it again, but it's hard to tell when you're when you're trying to four ply from a single versus four ply from four different pieces or three ply or whatever. So I'm going to stick with the three ply and hope for the best. Hope that I can spin the third bump back to the original size of the first bump and it will all work its way out. But what I need from you guys 
is I need your help to decide which pattern to use. What I have concluded is that I would like to make my mom a shawl that's kind of like a crescent shape. Not um, a half circle, but the crescent, the kind that kind of come up or are just long. Um, the ones that come to mind right away are something like um, crosswords at the coffee house. Um, even the Walnut Grove that has a little bit of a point to it. Um, Hogwarts Express, the Love Train, those, that shape is what I'm looking for. And even the ones that kind of come up and come to like a, like kind of wings. I would like my mom to be able to put it over her shoulders if, if she needs a little bit of warmth, but wear it as a scarf as well. And I don't know that she would wear it, um, like a, like the, I don't know that she would wear the, like a, the triangle ones where you put the triangle down in the front. I'm not sure if she would wear that, but I think she would wear something more in the lines of like like the citron where it's more rounded. She could put it over her shoulders or she can wrap it more around her neck. I want something like that. Now the citron is, is a half circle. Um, so I don't really want the half circle type. I want the crescent. Um, what are you playing with over there? Anyway, so what I would like to do, I'm going to set up a thread in the Ravelry group, and I would like you to share patterns that either that you've made or that you know about that are maybe in your queue. Um, I would like some lace detail on the bottom edge of it. Um, it can be stockinette or garter stitch at the top. It could be all um, lace or garter stitch. Even though, like, I think the Summer Flies shawl is, um, I think the Summer Flies shawl is, um, straight across the top. Um, uh, but another one that comes to mind is Sugared Violets. Stuff like that. That's, that's what I'm looking for. But I'm going to be making it for my mom. I want it to be big enough that she can wrap it around her like a shawlette or just wear it like a scarf. So again, I'll start that thread if you can um, share with me some patterns. And hopefully by the time I finish spinning this, I will know what I'm going to knit with it. The other thing that I have been spinning, which I just spun today, is I started the next piece of the fiber study. Which is the Shetland Humbug. And this says one ounce. I think these samples are way more than one ounce because I have spun about half of this already. When I took it out of the paper, I laid it out, and I'm pretty sure that I've spun a, a length at least this long. And I weighed it thinking, oh, how much am I going to have left? I have 0.8 ounces left. <laughs> I wish I had weighed it before I started spinning it. I can weigh it when it's done, but, um, but yeah, very generous on the samples. But I spun this at work today on the e-spinner. That's how much I got done. Quite a bit. And then what happened was the drive band got a little loose and it started slipping on the little um, thing that my husband made down here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking. I think either we need to shorten the drive band just a little bit more or I think the better option will be to create something so that the drive band does not slip on this thing down here. Um, my husband does have another pulley thing that he wants to use, but it won't work on this particular model because it's, it's, um, it is a wider diameter than this thing down here and it will stick out the bottom. So right now we just need to figure out how we're going to keep that from slipping. But I think, and I spun all of this in about an hour. It would have taken me so much longer. 
And I don't know, again, I don't know if it's just because I'm not being specifically um, anal, I guess I should say, about having it exactly perfect. Whereas when I'm spinning something that I know I'm going to knit into something else, I'm, I'm really anal about trying to keep a consistency with this. I just was kind of going and, I mean, I think it's pretty consistent, but I don't know. We'll see what it, how it turns out. But I had a whole lot of fun spinning it today. Um, I was just sad when the drive band started spinning and I had to stop. I would have had this whole thing done, I think, if I could have continued. Because... I got lucky today, and the boss didn't come back to the office until 3.30. He didn't, he didn't come into the office this morning, and he didn't come back to the office until 3.30 today. So I got to play all day. Quite nice. And then I got surprised as I left that he's not going to be in the office on Monday or Tuesday. So more fun days at work. But this is, again, the Humbug Shetland, and I am liking this a lot better. It feels kind of kind of scratchy in my hands and a little bit on my face, but not too bad. But let me tell you, it's a whole lot better than that Cormo. <laughs> Sorry, Corey, but I don't like the Cormo. <laughs> and um, but I'm having fun with this. Obviously, it's going very quickly. The next time I start a a little sample, I'm going to weigh it before I start because. I could have sworn that I had spun up half of this. And I thought I was halfway done. Well, I kind of am halfway done, but it's way more than an ounce. So that's what I'm spinning. I'm having a lot of fun with the fiber study. At least this one I am. The first one, not so much. I'm glad that I picked another one, a second one, that I was enjoying a little bit more than the first one because I probably would not have continued it. While we are talking about spinning, let's talk about um, Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece is June 30th through July 22nd. I am not officially joining Tour de Fleece. Because I can't guarantee that I'll stay committed to it. So I am... I am going to unofficially participate in Tour de Fleece. <laughs> I will do my best to spin every day during Tour de Fleece and uh, try to set a goal for so many ounces or something like that. But I'm not going to officially join a team or anything like that. I think it's going to be fun just spinning along. But I don't want to have the commitment of having to post my progress and all of that. It's just, it's too much. It's too much to think about. <laughs> so I'm not going to officially participate, but I am going to participate. And the same goes with Rav Olympics. I think it's a great thing to kind of challenge yourself uh, for Rav Olympics. But again, I have too many other things that I want to knit. I don't want to be confined into a specific type of project or one specific project that I need to start and finish within the Olympics. So I'm not going to be participating in Rav Olympics. I love hearing about it from other podcasters and other people on the boards. For me, it just doesn't work. I have so many times I've wanted to join the um, Harry Potter House Cup thing, but it's like I just don't want to be put into a... Um, I don't want to have to fit my knitting into a specific category. So that's why I don't join those things. But I encourage all of you to join them if that is your thing. Because it sounds like a lot of fun. It just, for me, it would stress me out. <laughs> that's just me. All right, so... I think the last thing that we have on our agenda today is to talk about the Potiversary drawings, which are going quite nicely. I have some prizes here. 
um, that I will show you. And I have already drawn the winners as well. Um, I have to pull up something on here. Okay. So, the first prize for this week is this lovely bun bump of Cloud Lover Fibers. This was the um, Haunted Vineyard colorway that was done by Cloud Lover for the Knit Girls for their spin-along. I had purchased two bumps of this fiber, and I spun up one of them, and I didn't use the second bump, and I thought, you know what? I have so many other wonderful bumps of fiber that I'm not going to want to spin this one again right away. So I'm just going to give it to some lucky winner. And hopefully they are a spinner and hopefully they don't have this colorway. It is really awesome, but I already spun it. And why have it languishing in my stash if I'm not going to spin it right away? And if I already have a garment with it. So, the winner of this bump of fiber is number 104, and that is WKH25, and her name is Wendy. So, Wendy, congratulations, you have won the Cloud Lover Fiber. Get in contact with me on our Ravelry and provide me your mailing address, and I will get this in the mail to you. Congratulations. The second prize is something that is wrapped up nice and tight, and I'm not going to unwrap it because more than likely I will break it. So, I have a picture <laughs> instead. The second prize is one of these wine glasses. It's by the Daily Fiber, and on the wine glass, on one side, it says, Your Daily Fiber, and on the other side, it reads, um the line for ripping out, refill as necessary, that's the top line. Below that is stock and that stitch, then fair isle and lace thinning. So obviously, if you're knitting lace, you only get this much wine. <laughs> so I thought they were very cute. It is one wine glass, and again, it's all bound up nice and um, in bubble wrap and everything. And I will leave that in there. And I will even wrap it up even more when I, when I ship it out. But in addition to that, you will also receive um, a tape measure from your daily fiber as well. So the winner of that prize is going to be number 81, Crafty Josie. And her name is Josie. So Josie, congratulations. You have won the wine glass. So again, get in contact with me on Ravelry and let me know your um, email or your mailing address and I will get that shipped off to you. Last week, I had all the prizes shipped by Tuesday. So it's so nice to know that um, so many people watched the show right away and the people that won contacted me like that day or the next day. So that was awesome. Um, and the final prize is for some of my personal handmade cards. And I made all of these cards. And I'm just going to show you. I used to be a rubber stamper before I became a knitter. And I have quite a few cards that I have made over the years and I used to be a demonstrator as well which is why I have so many cards <laughs> because I would make cards for I would make multiples of everything and I would just keep them for when I needed them and just by pulling these out actually that one goes like this just by pulling these out for this prize, it has sparked my interest into um, stamping again. So I can see 
that I might be pulling out my stamps soon. Oops. In fact, I went through the um, Close to My Heart catalog today and found a couple of sets that I like. So these are all the cards that this winner is going to receive. I think there's 15 or so here. And this is what I stamp on the back of them. It says, um, my name and limited edition, hand stamped. Original hand stamped art, I think. Yeah. I had a special stamp made. Love it. So those are all of my cards that will be going to one lucky winner. And that winner is number 171, Lolly T. And that is Laura. So Laura, congratulations. You have won my hand stamped cards. And um, I have your address. However, I'm going to wait until you contact me anyway so that you can watch the podcast and learn that you are the winner. So when you contact me, I can um, drop those in the mail to you so you can have those cards. And they will all come with envelopes as well. And I think that's it. It is now 7 o'clock. But there were so many stops and starts. I'm not sure if it's going to be over an hour or not. But anyway... That's all I have for you today. I'm going to get this um, exported and imported and edited and all of that hopefully before I go to bed in two hours so that I can get it uploaded, um, so I can get it started to be uploaded when I head to bed. So I hope everybody has a great weekend. I am going to be extremely busy this weekend. Um... Hopefully, I will still get a lot of knitting done. Like I said, my boss is out of the office on Monday and Tuesday, so I could potentially get a lot of knitting done on Monday and Tuesday. Hopefully, I'll have the e-spinner fixed so that I can take that back to work with me on Monday and Tuesday as well. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you have a great weekend and a great week ahead of you, and I will talk to you next Saturday. Bye for now. These ladies are getting ready for their blocking demo, yes. and they're they're drying their shawls right now. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. See if I can still jump. That's a soft thing.